Hello, I'm Pastor Daniel Flukey from St. Peter Lutheran Church in Green, Iowa, where we are reading through this week all of Paul's letter to the Philippians. Right now we're in the middle of chapter 2. So yesterday, in the first half of the chapter, we heard Paul instruct the Philippians to live with humility. He called them to put others before themselves. And as an example of what perfect humility looks like, Paul pointed to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who gave up everything to die on a cross, out of love for the world, to die for sinful people like you and me. That's our example of humility. So with that perfect example of divine humility in mind, Paul continues with some instructions for those of us who claim to follow Jesus. So here's Philippians 2, beginning with verse 14. Paul writes, Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world. It is by your holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out as a libation over the sacrifice and the offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. And in the same way, you also must be glad and rejoice with me. I hope in the Lord to send Timothy to you soon, so that I may be cheered by news of you. I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. All of them are seeking their own interests not those of Jesus Christ. But Timothy's worth you know, how, like a son with a father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me, and I trust that in the Lord that I will come also soon. Still, I think it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier, your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for all of you and has been distressed because he heard, because you heard that he was ill. He was indeed so ill that he nearly died. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, so that I would not have one sorrow after another. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, in order that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. Welcome him, then, in the Lord with all joy, and honor such people, because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for those services that you could not give me. Here ends the reading. Imagine the witness to the world Imagine the world's reaction if Christians would actually do all things without murmuring or arguing. Paul says we Christians are to shine like stars in the world. He's picking up, of course, on a language Jesus used. In John 8, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus came into the world to shine God's light into the darkness of this broken sinful world in which we live. But Jesus did not only say that he himself was the light of the world. In Matthew 5, he said, you are the light of the world. You, his disciples, his followers, his church, you, me. Our calling is to reflect God, to be points of light in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, as Paul puts it. It's a high calling, but remember, in the verse right before this, the last verse we read yesterday, Paul has just said, it is God who is at work in us. God's the one doing the work. The Holy Spirit is enabling you and I to shine God's light, enabling people to see God's light through us, through our witness. Next, Paul mentions two of the people around him, Timothy and Epaphroditus. Now remember, Paul is writing this as a letter an actual sheet of paper, well, actually parchment, I suppose, but an actual physical letter, and it will need to be delivered. Now, you've probably heard of Timothy. 
He was a companion of Paul on some of his journeys, and the biblical letters of 1 and 2 Timothy are framed as instructions to Timothy from Paul. But Epaphroditus is a little bit more obscure. He's only mentioned in Philippians, this chapter and then later in chapter 4. Apparently, Epaphroditus was sent from the church in Philippi to Paul, to Paul, remember, Paul's in prison, and the church in Philippi sent Epaphroditus to take care of Paul and to bring him some gifts, sort of a care package. But while Epaphroditus is visiting Paul, he becomes sick, so sick it sounds like that he almost died. Now that he's recovered, Paul is sending him back with this letter, and I suppose this letter also serves as a sort of doctor's note explaining why he took so long to get back. That wraps up chapter 2. Tomorrow we'll continue with all of chapter 3 in one day. For now, let's pray. Good and gracious God, you call us as your people to be your witnesses in the world, to shine your light. Lord, help us to follow the guidings and the nudges of your Holy Spirit. Point us in the right direction so that we may reflect your love and grace to those who most need to hear it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow for chapter 3.